Hello, Shoshana. Hi. Hello. I guess we're not particularly well attended right now, but. <laughs> Keep waiting. We got two more coming in. They're not. Uh... Oh, you have to make me co-host, Alan. Sorry, cancel, cancel. There you go, I think, yep. yep. All right, we'll get started in a minute. Uh, just waiting for a few more people to join in. Britt is here, although there she comes. So, so we actually have a quorum, but let's wait a couple more minutes. I probably have to sign off a couple minutes early. There's a school committee meeting tonight, and they're trying to cut the orchestra and band programs. So, I don't know. Yeah. What time is that? At 6 30. All right, we'll try to get most of the business done before then. Ellen's here, right? That's good. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, all right. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, there's five visitors. I'm going to have them uh, say their names and what brings them to join our meeting today, but welcome everyone. So Anna Carter. Hello. Um, I'm representing Misty Meadows. We, we spoke last meeting about um, hoping we could be uh, granted two, two trees that would be um, for memorial of two pre presidents who we've lost. Um, by by that they passed away, and um, we discussed maintenance. And I've gone back to my neighbors, and we've agreed to um, take care and make take measures so that lawnmowers and landscapers would not damage the trees by putting fencing and mulch. And also, we've committed to watering the trees during the hot weather and basically make, taking good care of them. So I think those were the outstanding questions from the last meeting. And I said I would go back and check with my neighbors and they've agreed that we will we will do that. We will care for the trees carefully. Great, so you are on the agenda for that. Um, well, let's go along with the other visitors. Brooks, you wanna introduce yourself? Yeah, I've, I've been here before. Um, Brooks Ballinger, you know, I uh, was at uh, a meeting like two meetings ago, um, just a uh, Amherst resident who's interested in trees. Great. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, Pat? Hi, I'm Pat. I live at Applewood. I saw that Applewood was on the agenda, and we had seven trees that were diseased that were going to be coming down at some point and replaced. So I'm just trying to get an idea of what, what the status of everything is. Okay, great. Thank you for coming. Sue? 
Hi, I'm here to um, talk about planting a tree at the Munson Library in honor of Sue Hugis, who was a librarian there for many years. And the trustees had approved it and I had spoken with Alan and uh, we had hoped to get it planted um, a while ago, but things come up. So I'm just following up on that. Okay, thank you. And yeah, that is on the agenda, I guess also. And um, David. Hello, um, I'm David. I'm just a UMass student who also rents here and has gotten used to seeing the trees around the area. Um, and I had an assignment that I had to come to some meeting and thought this would be the perfect excuse to learn more about the Amherst Shade Tree Committee. Um, yeah. Great, well, welcome. And please feel free to ask questions anytime you want. I'm gonna promote the five of you to panelists so that we can see your face if you want. You don't have to do that. Um, and I you might want to mute if you're not speaking. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, welcome. Um, I guess we should introduce ourselves. I'm Henry Lappin, the chair of the committee. Uh, Julian. Hi, my name is Julian Hines. I'm the vice chair of the committee. Uh, Bennett. I'm Bennett Hazlip. I'm a committee member. I'm Shoshona King. I am a committee member. I am Ellen Kiter, also a committee member. Uh, Britt Crow Miller, committee member. All right. Um, the only person missing today is um, Sarah. She had a work commitment and couldn't make it today. So let's jump into the agenda. Um, I'm not gonna share screen because I'm looking at too many things at once. Uh, if anybody needs, I can, uh, we don't really have a chat to put it in, so all right. Uh, first, we do announcements and public comments, which we sort of did. Approval of the January minutes and volunteer hours. So committee members, um, do we approve the January minutes as written and sent out? All in favor? I think we had four people say yes. So thumbs up one more time. Yeah. Okay. Henry, is somebody taking notes for this meeting? Uh, thank you for that. Are you doing that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anybody else want to do it? I've already started the, I've already, I'm good. Great. Okay. Well, thank you, Ben. <laughs> Bennett is our recording secretary most of the time. Not always. Um, good. Uh, volunteer hours, uh, Julian. Uh, I'd say four or five for me. Five. Okay, I need a number to put in the yeah. thing. <laughs> Britt? Just one. One? Well, this meeting is over an hour, so. Okay. <laughs> so. Uh, includes this meeting. Yes. Uh, one and a half. We don't do halves. Okay, two. Ellen. <laughs> two. Okay, Bennett. Four. Uh, I did about six. It's a slow month. Often we have many more. And Shoshana. Two. Okay. And I didn't hear from Sarah, but she'll hopefully send me the minutes. All right, so that's the business taken care of. Um, let's, oops, wrong thing. Hold on. Uh, there we go. Agenda's back. So we'll go to, uh, well, what we're going to do is we're going to jump ahead since we have our guests here. So let's go to um, the order it's on is Applewood, Misty Meadows, and then Munson Library under presentations and discussions. Then we'll go back to the chair's report and all that. So um, what did I say was first? <laughs> Munson Library, I think. Munson Library, okay. Munson Library. Alan, do you want to talk about that? The month, sorry, you want me to talk about Munson Library tree planting? Yes. Okay, sure. Yep. I have, uh, yes, yeah, Sue, Sue McCoy and I have been in contact uh, and 
we have agreed to plant a tree, <laughs> the town has, um, and uh, we need to make that happen. Uh, we haven't, you know, we don't have a species. Um, I would prefer to plant something that would grow large and be and be a nice public shade tree, um, you know, planted in front. Uh, we, we have to come up with a, a location that is agreeable, um, you know, with the town and with, uh, I guess it would be the Munson Memorial Library Board, um, you know, that we plant a tree where they approve it on their property. <laughs> Anybody have any comments about that or? Are there- I know a tree was removed there earlier on the South Amherst Common. Did we want to maybe do a planting in that area? Put a few trees on the common? I like that idea. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. Is there a way that we could piggyback the planting at the library with you know, make it part of one of our spring plantings and yeah. some other trees in the area, or is that not an area that we're thinking about? It could be an area we could plant more. I would, um, we could expand it out a little bit away from uh, the Munson, and there's a, probably a couple locations on the common itself, and then um, Shea Street, uh, Pomeroy, and um, Southeast Street, um, Middle Street. Yeah, there's actually a pretty good footprint there for uh, some tree planting. That'd be fun. And I think, um, you know, we could try and um, get uh, participants from the, from the neighborhoods to kind of get the community invested in it down there. Great. Yeah, Sue, you had your hand up. Um, yes, um, I was just going to say about the planting at the Munson. Um, the Board of Trustees had approved it, and they said I then needed to get it approved by Al and, and where he felt a good place would be to plant it. <laughs> and we had talked about near the driveway in front of the library. He suggested that as a good spot. And I agree kind of in line with the last tree that was planted, I think for a memory of Claudia Brian's son. So, I mean, I think that would be a great spot. Um, just wanted to that, add that. That sounds very doable. Right. We can make that happen. We'll, we'll try Alan, to figure out. Great. Oh, go ahead, Ellen. Yes. Um, I'm just curious, Are do you know anything that is being even discussed about the abandoned school on the common? Um, I I don't officially. Okay. <laughs> so um, there's a lot to talk going on. I don't think there's any plans. Um, it, you know, I hate, I don't want to, I don't want to speak out of place because I don't have, there's nothing in definite okay. plans, but uh, they do have, they do intend to reuse that location. So. Mm -hmm. They could use trees, but I don't want to say anything. I mean, we don't want to plant if something yeah. happens. So, um, so we'll um, try to figure out which month we'll do that planting in. But let's plan on that being one of our, we always plant on the second Saturday of the month, starting in April. So we'll try to figure out which month will be best for us. And Sue will let you and the library board know. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, Misty Meadows, Anna, we, I saw the locations you sent us, which are right along um, uh, Stanley Street. So I think that's definitely something we can do, maybe even in conjunction with that same planting on two trees on Stanley Street, or there might be a separate planting. Excellent, sure. Um, yeah, I think uh, everything you brought up last time, and by the way, thank you for, I found the movie or the video and I was able to forward it to some of my um, key members of the neighborhood and show them exactly the conversation. So it's wonderful that that you record these sessions. Um, yeah, I, I think we're all set with agreeing to care for the trees and water them. Um, there is some suggestion of installing a spigot 
on the land there? I don't know. I don't know how what that would entail. Does that mean talking to the town about water? But at any rate, I, I can also see saving up a whole bunch of gallon containers, maybe gallons of water containers and filling them up and just driving our cars over to the trees. Um, we're not talking about all the trees in the whole area there, but if there's two new trees, I think we're talking about getting them started for the first three years. Is that right? Well, as far as watering? Yeah, you know, the first three years are the most critical. Mm. But I think we can handle it. And we're talking about maybe forming a committee of volunteers from the neighborhood that would take turns uh, watering twice a week during the hot weather, um, putting little fences around to to guard against the the lawnmower that we hire to to try not to you know to not bump into the trees. So um, I don't know if there were any other issues. We're just we're happy to have you say you can bring some trees. And I, we, I sent you that map uh, to Henry about the location and I don't know, is there any other question about it? Well, we should um, make a decision as a committee if we're going to do that and fund it with our funds. Yes. So it is um, within 25 feet of the right of way. So I, there's no reason we can't do that. Uh, anyone have any comments from the committee? I think as long as it's within 25 feet of the right of way and you know within that public area, then I think that's fine. Um, I would just suggest, and maybe you all discussed this, I wasn't present at the last meeting, but um, maybe there's a way to be careful about our tree selection given the logistical challenges of regular watering, <laughs> um, you know, with with selecting natives or, or trees that um, maybe do a little bit better with less uh, water and attention, obviously, you know, they need to be established first, but um, just being mindful of that. Yeah. It's a kind of a dry area there. Sandy Not soils. Yeah, sandy soil. Sandy soil, okay. One um, suggestion for watering is- We're also, okay. sorry, we'll also mulch clearly. So that'll help as well, right? Right. You can also buy a big water tank. Um, some of them you can buy even on wheels as like a little tow behind um, or walk behind thing, um, or even just a water tank that you fill every so often um, near the trees, and that could help with watering. Maybe a rain barrel, right? In case we get rain. Yeah. That's yeah, that too. Cool. Alan, right, do thank, you want to? Any suggestions are always welcome. Thank you. Okay. Alan, do you want to um, cite and choose the tree species for those and the Munson Library? Yes. Okay, great. I think that's good. Uh, let's move on to Applewood. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, we've talked about possibly doing a planting there. Alan was concerned about. Um, that it's not there's not much right of way and there's a lot of utilities underneath. So, yeah, is Pat there still? Yes, I'm still here. Okay, um, so I did uh, I did reach out. I haven't heard back from from the um, Applewood uh, manager yet um, as far as a site visit. Um, but uh, okay. I did, you know, I need to walk the site with her and find out where they would like to have trees planted in the setback along uh, Rambling Road. Um, okay. Once that's once that's done, um, we can start kind of determining how many trees we can do. Uh, we've also got to replace some of the trees that we lost uh, from our previous planting there on um, Country Corners. Yeah, you know, somebody told me they thought there were about seven along Rambling Road that were on the Applewood, adjacent to the Applewood property that yes. were diseased. So we plan on removing those in the okay, I'll, I'll, in the next couple of uh, weeks to maybe in March get those taken care of. Okay. 
Okay. And I'll I'll poke at Debbie and have her see if she's around, if she can contact you to get this moving. Because she'll she'll mm -hmm. know where the utilities are or have the have all the information on that. Thank you. All right. One question I had, I scoped out the site um a few days ago. And the sidewalk there along Rambling Road is quite bumpy because of tree roots as well as just cracking and potholes. So I'd imagine sometime in the near future, the town will be looking to redo that sidewalk. Um, and what I was wondering is we just need to make sure we're planting the trees location wise. I don't know, is there a location far enough back that if we if the sidewalk gets redone after the trees are planted, that we won't have to move them again or um have that disrupt the trees yeah that's a, it's you know the, the way i see it along that stretch for future tree plantings um we can remove the existing sidewalk uh and move it onto applewood property um and that would give us a wider grass belt to plant trees in next to the road in between the road and sidewalk um, since the sidewalk needs to be done anyway, because um, it's you know almost impassable at this point. At this point, um, you know, so that's one option. That takes a lot of capital planning and, and permissions from private property owners to put a sidewalk on their property. Um, very complicated process. Or we we try to get permission from the adjacent property owner to plant trees in the setback. Um, and in hopes that in the future they don't move the sidewalk closer to the trees we plant. So, yeah. is that something the committee can help with? That in one? the in the Applewood area, the tree the in the in the in the Applewood area, the sidewalk is right next to the road. Ver versus further up in the community, there's a space between the road and the sidewalk, and the trees are are planted in that space. But at the Applewood property, the trees are on the, it goes street, then sidewalk, then where the trees are planted. So there's plenty, there's more room there. And I don't believe any of them are in, have encroached the sidewalk adjacent to the Applewood property. So I'm, are you talking about the sidewalks that are on, is it Orchard Drive or? So Portland. it's on the beginning of Rambling Road, like the first quarter of a mile, or even less than that, off of West West Bay. You're talking, Road. You're talking about the first stretch of Rambling Road, um, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, yes, you're correct. Okay. All right. Well, we'll we'll continue to pursue that. I was asking Alan, is there anything the committee can do with that, or is it in your court right now? Yeah, it's a bit in my court right now to try to, you know get permission to, to plant on private property. And then once we get that, we've got, we've got to do the dig safe, find out where all those utilities are because they're just scattered all over the place. Um, okay. we, had to, we had to, I had to do a dig safe to remove a tree that blew over um, in the grass belt uh, a number of years ago. But when the dig safe came back, um, I was shocked to, to see what it looked like. Um, so I'm not sure how far we have to go to get away from all those utilities. So. Pat, would you mind telling me your um, your last name just for the notes? Thank you. Svitaka. It's S is in Sam, V is in Victor, E T A K A, and I'm a, I'm a resident resident at Applewood. Wonderful. Thank you, Pat. As I, I said, I'll I'll give Debbie a, a push to give you a call back, Alan. Appreciate it. I wanted to speak for another second on um, the library planting. I did a quick check to see if there was any sort of like date that would make sense. And it turns out that library week ends on the second Saturday in April. Hmm. And so it would it seems like it would be kind of like a perfect opportunity to like do like some sort of joint event that showcases you know the the tree committee and the library together sorry what week did you say that was shoshona it's um the second saturday in april 
Okay, so that's planting. also our Arbor Month planting. So. Yeah. But that, like the Sunday before and then end is when it starts and then it ends on that Saturday is li National Library Week. <laughs> <laughs> According to Google. Well, do we want to then do, we'll just make a decision now that that's where we'll do a planting in South Amherst for the first, for the first planting of the uh, planting season? It's not very far from the, um, the nursery if there's stuff we could do there too. True. And just walk down the road. Yeah, I think I think that's a great idea. I don't see why not. Um, is Henry still on the call? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think that's a great idea if the rest of the committee um, is good with that. I'm good with that. I don't think we have to take an official vote. Is that correct, Alan? Correct. Okay, great. Um, if Henry rejoins, I will hand the meeting back over to him. If not, I will take a shot at running the next few things on the agenda. Um, hopefully he returns. Um, yeah, so, oh, here's Henry. Perfect. Hi, Henry. All right. Sorry, everybody. I My computer is having troubles going in the shop tomorrow, but uh, anyway. I'm back. <laughs> okay. Um, so the next on the agenda is the chair's report. Uh, Pat, thank you for joining us and for bringing that up. Let me just uh, get everything back to where I was. Good. Okay. So the chair's report. Um, there's been a few emails that have come into the tree committee website, uh, tree committee uh, email list. Um, a woman uh, named Lakota Sando, who lives at University Village, is interested in actually doing, she actually filled out an ANTS form. ANTS is the old uh, Amherst uh, neighborhood tree planting program that we used to do. The program's defunct. I don't know where she found the form. <laughs> I don't think it's on our website anymore, but somehow she found it and applied. She wants to do a planting at University Village, I guess. I'm not sure if that's public or private property. But uh, she was hoping to come to the meeting tonight, and then she emailed me that she couldn't make it. So maybe she'll make the next meeting. Um, but we should think about that, and also we should try to figure out um, where that form is and how to delete it if we're not going to be doing that program. It was a great program where a neighborhood would come together and um, propose that we do a planting at their place, and they would get lots of people to help. And uh, it was sort of like we do on the second Saturday, but it was a bigger event with a lot of um, a lot of local volunteers. So that was a nice program. So we'll see if uh, that woman, uh, Lakota, can come to another meeting and we can yeah. discuss it then. Yeah, uh, Henry, can um, I just say um, something Our about first planting day is April 13th. We also have the Sustainability Festival on April 20th and Arbor Day. So we'll have a pretty full month in April. Um, I did get an email. Someone was worried about the uh, safety of the groom tree, the bride and groom trees at the uh, Amherst Historical Society. And I assured her that what we had heard when we met with the library uh, board was that those trees will be not in any danger from the construction. Uh, anyone have any comments about that stuff so far? Yeah. Um, Henry, I just want to say, I, I really like the uh, idea. I can't hear you, Brooks. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, we can hear. Uh, I can we hear. can hear you. So we I think that's you. your computer. Go ahead, Brooks. Okay, everybody else can hear me. Okay. Um, I really like the idea of us um, working at University Village. My thought is that um, this woman that reached out to us, we should get back to her and say, if you can recruit like three or four other folks in in University Village who want to do this, we would love to come there and plant some trees. It's a great place for us. Alan, is that private or public property? Do you know? 
Um, the website says university managed. Yeah, well, the site is, but I'm not, I can't. Is that Olympia Drive? I'm drawing a blank. Um, um, Olympia I was, is, I thought, Village Park, right? Off North yeah. Pleasant. Yeah, I thought it was off North Pleasant Street. It is. Yeah, it's where they tore down all those other ones. Yeah. Yeah, so it used to be, I don't know if it's still, it used to be like um, international grad students and their Oh, family. Lincoln Apartments? Fam it's family housing. Yeah. It used to, North Village. It used to be is North Village? Be is this North near North the Village. fire station, yeah. near the North uh, Fire Station? It used yeah. to be North Village. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know where I am now. That's where they call it now? <laughs> University <laughs> Village? Okay. Right. That's what she called it. I don't know where it is. That's so. what it's called. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we can plant on, you know, we can plant out in front of, um, of there. Um, it's cross street from, kind of across street from Hobart Lane and, and the other development, old apartment subdivision. Um, yeah, I mean, we could plant on North Pleasant Street, but we can't plant inside the, um, you know, well, on the road. With donated trees, right? We can't use town funds for that, but. Yeah. Since it might be a um, a economically disadvantaged area, we could possibly get a grant to get some funding for that too. Um, true. Oh, we have other you areas in pay. town that are less <laughs> advantaged <laughs> okay. than the brand new lead housing complex the university built um, and landscaped quite nicely. Um, but uh, yeah. Okay. We could plant on the street in front. We couldn't plant, you know, on university okay. property. So okay, I will get back to her, and hopefully she can come to the next meeting. I'll suggest that she get a group of people together to help, and uh, we'll pick a date to plant. I'll tell her that we can plant by the road. Um, we should look into who owns it and whether we can plant further in. If it's already been landscaped, if it's the new place, then maybe that doesn't make sense for us to do it. But it's owned it, by UMass. Okay. So we can encourage her to go to UMass for the money for planting there. All right, good. Any other comments? No? All right, uh, let me see if there's one other thing. Oh, I had to do a conflict of interest training, which we all have to do as members of the committee, but I have to do it every two years. So be aware that you might get a note from the town saying, do this. Uh, and it was actually very simple this time. You just had to read something and check that you acknowledge that you read it. So it was last time we had to take a test and the whole thing was a, a bigger to do. Um, I think that's all I have. Oh, no, one more thing is uh, the town council offers liaisons to town boards and committees. And they don't guarantee they would do this, but they wanted to know if we wanted a liaison from the town council. There would be someone who would come to our meetings um, let us know what's happening with the town council, bring our concerns to the town council. It might be a nice thing to have. Uh, we don't need to, we can say no. Um, but what do people think, committee members think? I don't see why we would say no. Do we get to pick which one? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Yeah, I think, I think that would be great. The more understanding town councilors have of what we do what our needs are, the more likely that funding will stay in the budget because it's not guaranteed. <laughs> exactly what I was thinking. Okay. Well, I propose that we say yes to that. Committee members vote. Yes. Okay, unanimous. Good. I will let, uh, I think it was Pat from the committee, I can't remember, I think that was who it was. So I will let her know that we would like a liaison if they wanna provide us one. Good. And that's, um, that's all I have. So uh, Julian. Yeah, nice thanks Henry. I think you're thinking of Pat DeAngelis, I could be wrong, district yeah. two. That's um, right. Yeah, uh, my updates, three updates are a piggybacking on what you said about the library project and the bride and groom tree. It's my understanding that they're having an arborist um, who is going to work with the tree to some extent. Um, 
to make sure it is protected during the renovation is what I've heard from members of the historical commission. Um, so that's thing A. B is, uh, B is just that I sort of on an unrelated note applied for the Mass Tree Wardens and Foresters scholarship. Um, so I put that in. Um, and I think I think that's all I have. I may be forgetting one thing, but I will check my notes once my phone charges. Okay. And uh, we don't have the treasurer's report because she's not here. She was supposed to send it to me, but forgot. So uh, tree warden's report, Helen. All right. Um, so just quickly, uh, just following up on the tree hearing, Fort River tree hearing. So obviously um, the decision, the vote there at the planning board was to and tree warden was to recommend the removal of the trees so they can put the driveway in. And uh, that's going to happen um, probably in March sometime or April um, for those trees. Um, the trees for the nursery, the bare root tree stock has been ordered um, and should be hopefully available um, for April, but it may be later than the second Saturday in April. So we may have to have a special day or try to keep them on ice till um, March, but we'll make it work. Um, I also have to order the grow bags um, and I found a supplier for those. So I'll order those as well. And then we have plenty of compost to put in them to you know bag them up and get them growing. So and I do need to make sure I, in April, I'll have the water turned on at the, the old horse barn there. So we have water. Okay, it would be the third Saturday in April is the Sustainability Festival. Third Saturday, okay. On the 20th. So hopefully we can have, we need it by then, really. <laughs> yeah. Well, these are the seedlings. These are the bare root stock that's going into the growing our trees at the nursery. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, the other ones, um, you said you were ordering some trees. No, I didn't. Um, I think we were going to vote on which varieties to at this meeting. But you said that you had some trees that you were ordering for the community and that you were going to order an extra number. Mm -hmm. And then I said I was also going to order seedlings as well. From Right. So um, anyway, I, I was, I'll look into that. Yes. OK, so we can order seedlings. Um, Arbor Day seedlings. Uh, Hope I have that with me. I didn't forget it. Let's see. I did. I can find it online very quickly. Oh. All right, here we go. Okay, rapid fire. Con color fir, white spruce, Douglas fir, white oak, tulip poplar, red oak, white dogwood, American hornbeam, shagbark hickory. Uh, winterberry, lilac, redbud, Washington hawthorn. Uh, those are the species. The shagbark, his, I haven't seen shagbark hickory ever. I don't remember ever seeing shagbark hickory before. Um, but uh, I don't know if the committee has any favorites in there that you'd like to see handed out for Arbor Day. I feel like the red buds, I was just going to say red buds and, or something on the smaller side might be nice because one of the reasons why people last year weren't interested in taking trees um, or as many people, I'm thinking of like younger folks in particular, mm -hmm. weren't interested in taking trees is because we had the tulip poplars and we were showing people like, hey, these grow really big. <laughs> they get to be like this tulip poplar outside the boltwood mm -hmm. and people were like, I'm renting. I can't do that. I don't know, you know, if there's something yeah. they could plant and then transport um, or just like a more manageable mm -hmm. size. I think red buds are a nice option. Um, yeah. The red bud or the hawthorn or the lilac, which would be hawthorn or red bud would be, you know, decent. So, you know, they're decent sized trees. Yeah. You know, Medium sized trees. So. What about winterberry? How big do they get? That's more of a shrub, really. I mean, it's yeah. it's, it's a not really tree form, right? 
but that that might be good for that that kind of situation that that's true talking about we could do both we could get a tree and we could get a, a larger arbor day seedling and a sh smaller sh you know, sure. size tree seedling I also noticed that people were interested in like um, the fruit tree that we had last year. They were excited about the idea of having something that they could eat. The pawpaw trees. Yeah. 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 They liked the pawpaws. That's true. I mean, oh, red yeah. ones, you can eat the buds. Hawthorns, you can eat the fruit. Um, the hawthorn and the um, lilac are not native trees to this area. Um, Washington Hawthorne's not native? I don't think. I think of the West Coast tree. Hmm. Huh. Um, but if it's a native, sure. Um, the berries the birds seem to like, I worry about the birds spreading them. And if they're not native, that would be a problem. Right. I don't think lilac is a great choice for trying to do habitat and, you know, things yeah. like that. Yeah, I agree. Well, they, have, um, they have white dogwood, whatever that is. I don't know what white dogwood is. So. Must be a Kusa dogwood. I don't know. White dogwood. Well, that's not yeah, it just says white dogwood. So. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there's so many dogwoods that just pop up in, around here. I don't know why you would get something that wasn't a native. Every time I turn around, a new dogwood grows in my backyard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same with the red, red buds, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We could do one large and one small, so a native red bud. And uh, you know, an eastern redbud and the shagbark hickory. So there's, you know, there are options, and both are good on the, you know, both are native, both have wildlife value. Okay, I like okay. that. Right. Um, I'll, I'll check to see if we, it might be that we ordered. I think it was witch hazel, and um, so we're getting some from my community. I was going to give some to the town. So let me. I just texted. Uh, my partner to see if she had ordered those. I'm not sure. So I'll get back to you, Alan. If not, then let's do those two. But yeah, okay. which hazel would be great too, I think. So yeah. For the large tree, let's use the uh shagbark hickory. Sure. Sure. Okay. okay. Uh then continuing. Um so uh the tree inventory quest for quote went out last week. Uh and I had three people expressing three companies express interest in it so um responses are due by the 23rd of february february um and uh they're supposed to be completed with the with the inventory um in early june um so that we have time to bill everything and get it submitted before july 1st because everything has to be submitted before july 1st um i also went in for an option to have them write up a um, report that also included sort of the ecosystem services that the trees are providing for the community and the cost benefits of the trees. Um, so that would be something that would be very helpful in, in making the point of why it's important to care for and maintain um, and promote trees in town. So um, if, if the inventory comes in at a good price, um, then I would go ahead and, and take the option to have them write up the, the uh, report as well. I also I'm sorry, took, um, Alan, I'm sorry. I think I missed the beginning of that. What do you mean they? they would write the, the company, report? the company that gets selected to do the inventory. Oh, so okay. I, yeah, went out to bid to have a contractor um, redo our 2010, 2011 inventory. Um, and to add some new streets onto that as well. So. Thank you. Also put out a request for quotes on some stump grinding using some of the money that uh, you help get for the town for tree planting and tree maintenance. So um, by February 23rd, I'll hopefully have all the quotes in to grind roughly 36 stumps that are scattered around town that I've been trying to get done for a number of years. Um, that includes grinding, cleaning up, loaming and seedings. Um, and that will free up a lot of planting spaces um, that I've just kind of been waiting to plant because I need to get the stumps out of the way first. So that'll be nice. Um, I also used a little bit of the money 
to hire urban forestry solutions to come out and do a risk tree assessment on a large white oak tree on Pelham Road. It's uh, right next to the sidewalk, it's right next to uh, the town line on, uh, with Pelham. So if you go up Pelham Road, right hand side, just before the marker that says, welcome to Pelham, um, there's a large white oak and it has a, a very old wound on the trunk. And um, the property owner there has been concerned about it for years and I occasionally go by and check it out and I was doing my walk around with it and thumping on the trunk to see if it sounded like there was more decay in it than before and there did appear to be the sound of more decay, uh, hollow wood. Um, so to be on the safe side, I hired Urban Forestry Solutions to come out with their resistograph and write up our risk report. So we measured the decay at the trunk around the decay and uh, it came back not very good. There's a lot more decay in the tree than I had suspected. Unfortunately, it has a beautiful, healthy crown. And, um, but his recommendation was to remove the tree. And I agree with him that the tree probably has reached a point where it's becoming structurally unstable and probably should come down. So um, mm. it's uh, a nice technology. The risk resistor graph takes a lot of the guesswork out of measuring where solid wood is in the tree and where decay is in the tree. And, um, so that was, it was helpful um, for me to be able to take the guesswork out of it. Is, is that some type of X-ray machine? Or it, 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 it uses a uh, very fine drill, actually. Mm. It's about the unit itself. It, it looks like it's got the handle of like a, a drill, like a cordless drill. And it's got this long rectangular box on it with lots of electrodes and sensors attached to it. And as the drill goes through the wood, it's measuring the resistance the drill meets as it goes through the wood. So when it, it's solid wood, it's, it's graphing that out. And then as it hits either a void or decay, it gets less resistance and it graphs that out. And you can do that at three or four different points in a large trunk and you can come up with a very um, accurate measurement of how sound the wood of the tree is at that location. It doesn't tell you an inch above or an inch below. It tells you right there where that what that wood is doing. But you can figure out if there's a, you know, if there's a 48 inch trunk and there's 10 inches of wood, solid wood, then you can assume that the cavity goes up and down in the trunk as well. So, mm. Is that like equipment super expensive or something we could It is expensive. Cool? It is expensive. <laughs> okay. It's something that I have been thinking about getting for the town. Um, it can be used for other things. It actually, it was used, developed to do structural, to test beams in buildings and bridges. Um, for decay, um, and it's been turned into a great tool for the tree care industry. Um, and I have been thinking about it and seeing if I can get some funding through grants or something to possibly do How it. How much did it cost to hire them to do that tree? It was, um, it was about $400. Hmm. He also writes up a report. So it gives me something to hold on to and show people um, to justify why I'm doing what I'm doing. So. How how much does the piece of equipment cost roughly? I, I looked at it a year ago, um, and they have some options to lease. It has to be serviced every year and recalibrated and sent back huh. to the factory. Um, it was it was like twelve thousand dollars so around there. Um, Yikes! And it's it's all digital now too, so it actually doesn't give you a piece of paper with graph on it like it used to. It just plugs into your computer and dumps it all in and has a bunch cool. of pre-made, you know, graphs it can do and charts and everything. So it's it's pretty nice. Nice trees. So yeah. That's all I have for an update. Okay. All right. I just heard back we did order the witch hazel. So let's just get the um shag bar kickeries for the main tree. So you don't want to get the red buds? I don't think so. What does the committee okay. think? 
Any opinions, anyone? I think that sounds fine. Just the hazel, uh, sorry, the witch hazel and the shag bark. We had we had reasonably sized excess of seedlings last year. Okay. All right, good. Uh, what's next? Just recommend that if we're given out witch hazel, we should all get a tutorial on male and female witch hazel because we fielded many questions about <laughs> stacking the witch hazel that uh, I wasn't prepared to answer. <laughs> One question for Alan, which is, I saw the tree on Dana Street was removed. Is that, was it just continuing to decay or what was the situation there? I know the one of the property owners nearby had a lot of concerns. Um, which tree on Dana Street are you referring to? <laughs> uh, big maple um, in the front yard of a house sort of early on on Dana Street near Amity. From from Main Street, you mean? Yeah. From yeah. sorry, Amity Street. Amity. Sorry, yeah. Amity Street. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That tree was um far gone. It was um it was in very bad shape. Um, it was a big tree. It took a lot of work. It was uh, quite a removal. But um, yeah. yeah. So it was just dead, pretty much ready to go. Wasn't totally dead. It was just far too far gone to try to. Save it. to yeah. save it and all the, the entire half of the tree over the road was dead quarter of the tree towards their sidewalk was dead the only thing left alive was a piece of it that was kind of leaning towards the leaning towards the house so Got um, it. we just chose to take it down and get the stump ground and then plant some new trees so. sounds good okay i just heard that yeah that we got the witch hazels they were a dollar each and um, you know, we bought a hundred. We'll probably need twenty-five here. So, the seventy-five we can, uh, the town can use for that. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Good. Um, social media report, Shoshana and oh. Julia. Social media report. I don't have anything to report on the Instagram. We haven't had really anything going on um, there. Uh, Shoshana, I think you do Facebook, right? Yeah. yeah, I do the Facebook. Um, I have posted a few different things to, um, you know, it seems like we get around like four likes on our things. <laughs> yeah, we're not getting huge numbers of people to the page and to follow us. That's part of the problem. So I don't yeah. know how to do that. I don't know how the social media thing works, but if you guys want to look into how to get more likes and how to do that, um, that would probably be useful. Yeah, yeah. Ab absolutely. Um, I'll just bring it up right now for us to have a reference point on the Shane Tree Committee account. Uh, basically, we we actually just got two likes. Um, so that's cool. Um, but we have about 105, 106 followers. And like an average post maybe gets like 15, 10 to 15 likes. Um, so that's sort of where we stand currently. One thing I can do is I can repost it on my personal account. So maybe some of the kids from the high school will like it. <laughs> but um, that, I guess, is one idea. Another idea is we could, when we write editorials. Um, oh, right. That was the other thing I meant for my report. Um, I saw your your letter yes, <laughs> yes the uh the letter went out to um the daily hampshire gazette the amherst bulletin and the amherst indy so it's been published there um but what i was thinking is when we write letters in the future um i should have thought of this earlier we could also put our social media facebook and instagram tags at the bottom of the letter so anyone who wants to can follow us there is there a way since we are a committee of the town government that we could um that the town who you know has tens of thousands of followers um and then there's like a you know i live in amherst facebook pay all those things like i want but i think that might be private but if the town could somehow post the importance of liking or following us on social media that would help a lot rather than just grassroots 
asking people to join. I mean, I think I think we actually have to post things that people want. Well, to yes. Do, right? So like the the Instagram page has like six posts ever. So there's no reason for anybody to engage with that, right? So we need to be, if this is a strategy that we want to have and say like use social media to gain more public support or to gain more volunteers or whatever the goals of the social media engagement strategy are, right? Like there should be a plan developed. And I think whatever that plan is, it's got to involve posting more stuff. Mm -hmm. that stays up right so like julian and i had i had said you know when you post something like from our plantings don't do it as a story because that disappears do it as like an actual post or a post and a story right so if there's more content up there then people are more likely to see it they're more likely to to engage with it and follow it but i don't think we all as a whole have been using it in in that way I also don't know how much of how much time it's worth, right? If like, yeah, it's the it's algorithm to have to um, post something at least once a week, but ultimately they want you to um, post three times a week. And the bet, and if you're only going to do it once a week, they want you to post at noon on Wednesday, and that usually can get like the most traction. And you have to have a like right away when you post it to get it shown to other people so like for anyone here please like anything that gets posted and then <laughs> that way it'll be more likely to be shown to like to beat that algorithm to show that it's relevant like because the like the facebook gods are constantly trying to chew down the things that it considers not relevant and if you're not posting enough content regularly or if something you post doesn't get caught right away by someone it does show, then it will bury it as irrelevant content. What do you post on Facebook, Shoshona? I know generally I post whenever there's a second Saturday planting, um, but that's yeah. generally about it. I should probably start doing it for tree hearings. Um, I think that might be something worth posting about. Um, but when, like, when do you post about I, I post definitely the um about second saturday plantings and i post like a picture of us after the second saturday planting yeah um the the meetings and um when i'm cruising around on facebook and i find something that seems like of interest to tree folk i'll share that but that won't be original content for us. That's shared content to, um, you know, be useful for our members. I guess we could make a post every time the newsletter goes out. That might be a good idea. Well, the newsletter is probably not itself worthy of Instagram posting. Yeah. Um, not because it's not good. I think it's very well written and an amazing piece of work every month. <laughs> but the, what what is of interest, I think, is that there. I mean, there is local news in there about trees. And every time I send one of those things out, I try to find, like, I will literally just go to Google and type in trees and hit the news tab. And you'd be surprised. <laughs> like, there's always, there's some, the, somebody's always, some national publications always got something interesting about trees in any given month. Um, and so that's the kind of, you know, for people who just like, you know, as an Instagram follower, they're not, maybe they're not engaged too deeply, but if you get some warm, fuzzy tree news or like, oh my God, look at how big this tree is or things like that, that's enough, you know, to probably juice our numbers a little bit. And then I was also thinking that seasonally, you know, like um, when people, I mean, it's hard in February, it's really for the newsletter for sure. It's just hard to think about tree news. Like there's just not a lot of stuff out there. Um, but once we start our plannings and people come by, you know, I think about, you know, when people help us do their plannings, it could be fun to do, a, you know, it just takes doing it, which is the effort is the hard part. But if somebody joins and they have an Instagram account, we take a picture of them, we do a little profile of them, they share it to their friends and suddenly, you know, that kind of starts to build. Um, and so it's probably OK for it. To, you know, ideally, if we, you know, if this were a big deal for us. 
we'd be posting every three days throughout the year, but maybe this is a baby step. We just look at it as a seasonal thing. Like once we start planning, that's, you know, that's newsworthy and it's a good community feeling and it, we can highlight people, you know, that, that kind of stuff. I starting to ramble, but you see what I'm saying? Like there's a, a there's local news, there's topical tree news, and then there's kind of the more intense seasonal stuff that we could post once our plannings get underway. Yeah, I definitely think plantings are worthy of posting, and same with like hearings and that sort of thing. Regular meetings, I'm not as sure about, newsletters, not as sure about, but there's certainly a ebbs and flows with the season, so to speak. Yeah. I think we could probably send stuff to the town to post on their accounts that would link to our places. And that might get more people coming to our page. Yeah, so I could send an email out, too. I'm not sure who's the director of like outreach and stuff now that Brianna left. Um, but we could send an email being like, hey, could you please repost what we have on your town pages? I don't think the town has an Instagram but they definitely have Facebook and Twitter. Okay, so yeah, can you guys um, reach out to the town people who do that and try to get things reposted there? Yeah, I, I will absolutely do that. I'm just not sure who is in charge of it currently. Okay, well, that should be easy. I mean, Sorry, I just wanted to add, um, when I searched for public shade tree, Amherst public shade tree on Instagram, uh, I got two accounts. Uh, to me, Amherst Shade Trees and Amherst Shade Tree Committee. Um, so that might be, I don't know if that's intentional or not, but oh, one yeah. of them looks older <laughs> and I think that's that might be confused, confusing. Yeah, yeah, that was, there's the old account that was, I believe, managed by somebody else. And then there's the new account that's managed by me. Um, and we weren't able to get the login to the uh, account mm -hmm. to be able to either use it or shut it down. Mm -hmm. I see. And I also think um, I emailed, I like, didn't know Brianna left. I emailed her and uh, the automatic reply was like, email the town manager's office. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if there's a new person for the social media and outreach. You know, I have, not, I have not heard of a new person yet. So they haven't announced it at least. You know who I'll email? I'll email Jennifer Moyston and Angela Mills because they used to work with her. Hey, Angela. Angela Mills would be the person to ask. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. Well, let's move on. Uh, it's getting on in time. I know Britt has to leave. Or um, so the only thing, uh, well, it's two things. UMass interns. Britt. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't done anything with that this semester. Um, I mean, the semester just started last week and a half ago. Um, and I didn't. I didn't bring any students in for credit, mostly because I just don't have the capacity to effectively oversee them and be helpful. Um, but, you know, if we have specific events, I can certainly promote them and try to get students engaged, you know, on a per event basis. Well, definitely in April, I have second Saturday planting and then the third okay. Saturday is the, uh, we'll need help for the booth. Yep. At the Snowbelly Festival. Great. All right, good. Um, and then the Mary Maple table. Loading yes. Table. Yeah, so I emailed, I think her name's Sharon, um, who had given the pre us the presentation a couple months ago, uh, asking if they would be interested in, um, you know, a long-term semi-permanent loan um, of this table. And she replied immediately, like, one word, yes, giant letters, exclamation points. Um, and I said that I would follow up with you all um, to see what else, you know, we had talked about like a, a plaque of some kind that Ellen was thinking about. Um, I mean, I have the table, I'm happy to arrange delivery, um, but I don't know if there were other things that the committee wanted to make sure um, we're thinking about with this loan. Well, we definitely wanted um, at least a sticker on the bottom saying this is the property of the Amherst Public Shade Tree Committee on loan. I don't know, if, should we have a, a contract or some sort of letter of understanding between us and the library? 
Yeah, yes. I think like an MOU makes sense. Yeah, I, I, I would tend to agree, especially given that their furniture costs and stuff have been an issue. Yeah. So do you want to check in with them about that? Britt? Yes. Yeah. Do we have like shade tree committee letterhead? That we... <laughs> yes, we have letterhead. I can send we you. We do. Over. Great. Love it. Okay. okay. Um. Yeah. So I could put something together on that and just say, you know, we'd like to do an MOU and then um, Ellen, were you thinking about something other than just like a sticker on the bottom or, you know, it, I, I think in my mind, it would make sense to have something that indicates to people, honey, hold on, something that indicates to people um, that this is from the Mary Maple, um, just so there's, you know, people don't just think it's some random wooden table. Yeah, yeah I was going to ask, do we want to sort of give the table a title? <laughs> And I think we should also acknowledge the person who made it. Yes. So, um, and then follow up with them and let them know that it's on yeah. display. Yeah. Right. And I would put the year too. So, yeah. I mean, okay. we're just sort of following museum format. Um, so, yeah, I would just need the name of the craftsperson. Um, and I guess a table from the former Mary Maple. It's got to be called the Mary just, Table. The Mary the table. <laughs> it's, it's right there. Alan, do you have the name of the woman? The artist? I'm sure I do in my I email. think Henry and I have it somewhere too. Yeah. Okay, so let's all look for it and uh, we'll send that to Ellen. I'll send you letterhead, Britt. Okay. And that's great. We'll actually get that happening. Get it off the agenda. It's been there for months. <laughs> And Good. this is going to the library, not to the historical society, correct? We asked the Jones. Yeah, that was oh. the, just because it would be more viewed, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. More yep. widely viewed, I guess. Yeah. So nobody Great. carves into it or something. No. But... <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? Okay, back to the agenda. Uh, second Saturday work days. Um, do we want to just make a decision for the April planting or you want to, Alan, do you want to wait on that? I would say we, we, April 2nd, Saturday, at least is set for Munson Memorial and, uh, Southeast, South Amherst planting. Um, I can okay. definitely make that happen. Um, that okay. is the beginning of school vacation week. So I don't know if that um, impacts anybody. It impacts me, but um, I don't know. It... The thirteenth is that really? Yes. Okay. Yeah. The following the the following Monday, that whole week is off. There'll be more kids around to help plant trees. Yeah, <laughs> I don't see why not. <laughs> it's just if anyone has travel plans. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, that's good for April and. Uh, and we'll go from there. That's also, someone mentioned that was the library week. So that's a good time to do it. Okay, um, back to the agenda. Um, Arbor Day plans, uh, speaker, seedling varieties we talked about. Um, Alan, did you reach out to Doug Ptolemy? I have not. I totally forgot to. I apologize. Yeah. Okay. So let's try to get that happening. Yeah. Um, Henry, I just sent a quick note to Angela um, asking to repost um, some of the stuff that we post on our account, on the town accounts. We'll keep the committee apprised of what she says. Good, thank you. Okay, um, okay, so second Saturday work, Arbor Day plans, town tree in Detroit, Allen talked about, UMass interns we did, Mary Maple Table we did, urban forestry management plan. Uh, the update on that is that the information that we get from our inventory and the report is going to be crucial in helping to create our data-driven urban forest management plan. So um, I have sort of the backbones of the management plan kind of outlined, um, and I'm filling in bits and pieces of it as I'm motivated and have time to do. Um, and then once we get all this information, then we have to kind of, it's going to look at our old inventory and look at our new inventory and see how our efforts to mitigate risk trees and plant new trees, you know, 
are we accomplishing our goals um, and where we need to improve um, to accomplish our goals. So. Great, okay. And then the environmental um, justice neighborhood planting ideas. Any news on that from anyone? Uh, I don't know if Olympia Oaks or Olympia Drive is a town owned road, but we could do some planting in there or in the affordable housing um, units back off of Olympia. The road is town owned. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, but the, you know, the driveways off into those are not. Um, so that's where we'd have to use the other funds to plant trees. Got it. Right, let's keep that on the back burner at least because it's getting late tonight. Um, all right. Uh, last thing on the presentations and discussion is the website update. Uh, Bennett, I mentioned the request to tree page, which yeah. uh, needs our new uh, new decision about what we do with that. Right. So. Um... I don't remember the issue. It's that we have a request a tree page that currently promotes a policy that we don't actually support. Right, and then we we wrote up that agreement that what we do when we get um, requests for trees. Oh, right. And, uh, I can send that to you again if you want. Yeah, that would be helpful. Sorry. Can we update it the website ourselves, or does it have to go through the no, town? No, it has to go through the town. And we don't know who's doing it now that Brianna's That's gone. No, no, Correct. we can update it ourselves. Oh, I didn't know that. Or I yeah, forgot I, it. I go in every time. Yeah, we have it. editing permissions on. I just use Henry's login, and we could we can edit whatever we need to. Oh well, I'll I'll send you the login, and uh, yeah, then I won't have to negotiate. <laughs> Perfect. There's, back to David's question about the two pages. So, is, is, there's another web page out there. That is uh, a committee Instagram. web page? Instagram. There's another Instagram page. Instagram, two okay. Instagram pages. Okay. One is active. The other uh, was managed by a previous committee member who I don't have the info to log into. Do you know who that was? Do you have a name? I don't remember. Shoshona, did you manage it? Or is that... No? I didn't manage it. Um, Becca did. And uh, even when we were like corresponding with her and she was giving us like her information to like try and like do a handoff or something like it just wasn't working it yeah like we me and julian were at the library yeah like, we met a few times about it i think yeah and we spent like hours trying to like make it work and it just would not work yeah. so becca was the last person who had Becky. access Becky. yeah Becky. yeah yeah And Henry, you do not have contact information? I can reach out to her again. I'm not sure. I do have her contact. I'll, I'll reach out to her again, sure. Yeah, if, if she was able to just go in and kill that account, that would... Yeah, that would make it a lot better. Um, okay. She just got rid of it. Yep. That was for Instagram. Yeah. Okay, good. Good yeah. If for any reason she can't get rid of it, just write like old account or defunct account or whatever. Yeah, with the name of the new account. So, yeah. Um, good. Uh, website request to tree. Okay. I think that's all. There's some statewide things, but I have nothing to report on that. Is there anything with the solar bylaw group, Julian? Uh, no, the bylaw went before town council. They sent it back to the, I believe, CRC committee. Um, community Resources Committee, and now they will eventually discuss it um, and bring it, like, recommend it one way or another um, and offer their views on it, but it often takes a while to get through the committees. Can you keep track of that? When it comes back, it would be good for us to speak at Absolutely. those meetings and yeah, say totally. trees are not covered in this and we want them it's, to be? It's pretty weak, by the way, yep. yeah, I, for anyone who's read it. Okay, so Julian will keep track of that. And uh, 
that's everything on the agenda. Uh, David, uh, what did you think of the movie? I thought it was fun. I enjoyed all the thought that goes into it. Okay. Um, Feel free to come back next month. And uh, yeah, in April, we'll do the planting second Saturday. So second Tuesday, second Saturday. Cool. That's our main things. Sounds good. Anyone Thank you else? so much. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. Anyone else have comments? No? Pat, anything? No, I, I'll just give Debbie a push and make sure she gets in touch with Alan. Great. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, have a good month. And uh, yeah, send out the minutes and uh, I'll send the things I promised to do. And I'll see you all soon. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Take care, everybody. Bye. Thank you.